Warning! The Stone Age Gamer Podcast includes a lot of bad language. Cover your motherfucking ears. Good evening and welcome to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast. I am Chris Randazzo and joining me tonight is unintelligible swear word, Dan Ryan. Yeah, th- that's accurate. <laughs> I feel like out of everything, that's probably the most accurate. <laughs> yeah. It's time for the Alphabet Super Series. It was my pick for the letter Q, and we'll be discussing Qbert for the PlayStation and Dreamcast. How did we enjoy jumping on cubes floating in trippy ass voids? Watch out for snakes, because the Stone Age Gamer Podcast starts now. I got to use watch out for snakes. <laughs> <laughs> like, legitimately in conversation. Yeah. I love it. No, it's great. Hi, hi, everyone. This is episode 539. It's the week of November 8th, 2024, and welcome. For anyone new here, this is the official podcast of StoneAgeGamer.com. Dan and I talk every week about what's happening in the world of video games from a retro gamer's perspective, as well as whatever the hell else is going on in our lives. And speaking of which, what's, uh, what's there, what, what's shaking there, Dan? Oh, uh, not much. Um, I... I'm going to apologize if uh if this is a short episode this week. I don't I don't know if it's going to be. Um y- you know, cuz we have a tendency to to rattle on about no- nonsense, but there's no baseball uh to interrupt things tonight because <laughs> No, the, there is not. Cuz the Yankees are really really fucking bad at playing fundamental like little league baseball apparently. Um, God, that was very the, well. Fr- the 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 good news is that the Yankees did beat the team that you know they beat the Yankees. <laughs> they did. The Yankees beat the Yankees. Yankees. Uh, they I, sure did. Oh boy, were you watching that like live? I I was not, oh. and I'm kind of glad that I wasn't. I I caught. You know, I, I caught a, a was a reaction video of a bunch of people watching it, and when uh, what's his face didn't cover first base, and they're like, "What?" Yeah, and I'm watching this video, like, wait a minute, yeah, That's not, what's going on here? Yeah, it. Uh, I was so hard to start the day, <laughs> so I was so erect, and then I've never gone. <laughs> Never gone from fucking midnight to six quicker. It's just couldn't. Cause like, cause like Aaron Judge misses the fl- the ball in set. It's like okay, all right, it's fine, it's fine, it's five nothing, it's fine, it's okay. Like did he? Yeah, I remember checking in on the score, being like, okay, well. I guess I don't really need to watch this, do I? Yeah, no, like, Garrett, <laughs> Whoops. Garrett Cole is, is cruising out there, the fucking Judge hits a home run, Chisholm hits a home run, Stanton hits a home run, I'm like, alright, it's fucking, alright, it's Friday night, I don't know, I'm gonna have to talk to Chris about what we're gonna do about recording, um, you know, cause, cause there's definitely gonna be a, a, a game on Friday, and then, and then Aaron Judge misplays the ball, and it's like, okay, I mean, that happens, it shouldn't happen but like it happens whatever and then and then anthony volpe makes the right play trying to throw the ball to third um because that's the way his momentum was carrying him it was a but he but he rushes the throw oh okay all right base is loaded nobody out um fuck (laughs) okay but (laughs) but garrett cole's still on the mound so that's cool he'll just have to strike the next three guys out or get some ground balls or something, no problem. And he and then he strikes the next two guys out, and it's like, all right. Little pop fly, little ground ball. We're out of this inning, no problem. And then uh and then they get a little ground ball, and it's hit to Anthony Rizzo at first base, and then he sits there and Garrett Cole stops running, but the Dodgers didn't stop running. They were like, nah, I got all right, I guess we'll just take a run. And then it just fucking kept happening it just <laughs> wouldn't fucking stop it was relentless just four... like someone had money riding on the game oh I'm my like... god just <laughs> i've never i've been watching baseball for a very very long time and i have never seen and i think statistically too it proves out that i have never seen a worse defensive inning than whatever the fuck that was. Because <laughs> holy fucking dog shit, that was bad. So, anyway, all of that is to say that there will be no baseball uh, interrupting 
this evening's uh, festivities. But I feel yes, Dan and I will not be trying to commentate sports and sporting <laughs> events anymore. I mean, it's the, it's the world's like, you know, it's fine. But I feel overall um, like horse shit. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I started the day feeling pretty good. And then at lunchtime, I was like, oh, no. OK, like apparently I'm going to continue to feel shitty today. Um, and then it just kept getting fucking worse and worse and worse throughout the day. So, like, I'm sitting here right now. Um, what what got really weird is I went to pick my kids up from school. Um, and when I when we got home, I my brain like just fucking shut off. I don't know what happened, but I was like feeling incredibly overwhelmed. And because I get I get lightheaded around this time every week after the chemo um like a week out from the treatment i for like friday saturday sunday monday whatever i get lightheaded pretty easily and the doctor was like yeah it's normal it happens it's like okay that's fine but like when i get lightheaded it like i get a ringing in my ears too and my ears get fucking cold at the same like it's really shitty so like went and picked the kids up from school got home, walked in the house, sat down, and, like, was super lightheaded, and the kids are trying to info dump to me, and I was just like, everybody shut the fuck up! <laughs> like, the dogs are barking. It's like, I'm, good. I'm either having a panic attack, or, like, I don't know what the fuck is happening. Everybody shut up. I'm uh, going upstairs to lay down, and I just went up and, like, laid in my bed in the dark for, like, two hours. It's like, what the fuck, dude? Super weird. Super fucking weird. Not a fan. I really wanted to lay in my room in the dark for two hours today. I've been I've been sleeping like garbage this week. Yeah, I haven't so slept well this week either, you know, because I've been up late watching baseball or whatever, and right. that's which is fine. Like, it's not a big deal, but I just, like, I, I just don't sleep through the night anymore. That's just not a thing that happens. It doesn't matter if I take um, an edible. It doesn't matter if I take, like, you know, uh, melatonin or whatever. Like, I, I just... Physically, the pain wakes me up throughout the night. Like, I, I just, it's not going to happen. So, I'm fucking tired, you know, and then all this shit today, too. I'm like, oh, man. It's, I, Have but, you tried not having cancer? Uh, yes, actually. That's, I believe, what the chemo is for, um, is to <laughs> not have the cancer. Well, and that's the, the fucking crazy thing about it, the shitty thing about it. Eh, shitty is maybe the wrong word, but whatever. Um... Is that I'll get so I last week was um infusion number six of twelve. After infusion eight, I will get another scan. Um, and if that scan comes back totally clean, which is a distinct possibility with the way things were um were trending with the last one, if that scan comes back totally clean, no cancer whatsoever, I still have to do the other four treatments. <laughs> Yeah, you, know. <laughs> you get nothing. <laughs> you just, Good it day. Sir. It just doesn't matter because there could be something undetectable by the scan, and you don't want to let that sit there and fester, you know. And now, now we're just starting over at at fucking at jump again. So it's like, all right, I, they know what they're doing. It's working, but it's fucking hard, man. <laughs> not, not as easy as uh. Perhaps I thought it was going to be. I because th I thought like you know, all right, things are progressing. They're getting, um, they're getting better. So the chemo is not going to hit me as hard uh, as it was. But no, they they weren't lying when they said this shit is cumulative. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that's where I'm at. Uh, let's see. It's a it's it's been a stressful week. Uh, just getting ready for Halloween. And all that, uh, yeah. all that business. Halloween was nice. It was, it was fun. We, uh, I wasn't allowed to have a fire, uh, because right. of the drought. So I just kind of sat out front, and the full size candy bars went quick this year. We definitely saw a lot more people this year than I had in previous years. I might need to, you know, depending on funds, I might need to mm. spring for the for two boxes of full size years next year, because uh, they 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 went quick. But uh, you know, people were happy. They take pictures in front of our giant inflatables and that's awesome and whatnot yeah it's it's pretty fun i i you know i sat outside and i played a 
the Castlevania Vampire Survivors DLC on Switch while I was you know waiting in between uh uh trick or treaters. That was uh what a what a thing to come out on on Halloween. Like, yeah, I really this, wanted to get it, oh, but have not picked boy. it up yet. I I just don't I I can't right now. Like it's, I want to put like a full focus into it cuz I'm so fucking excited about it, you know? And uh-huh. I don't, I don't want to just like turn it on and be like, "Yeah, it's cool. Okay, I'm going to go lay lay back down with the heating pad again," you know? Yeah, it's um it's they said it was a very large stage and they were not fucking around. Um this is the first stage I think I've played that even with the the Mad Groove Arcana, you can't do everything in one no shot, shot unless you turn off the time limit. Wow. Like, you just can't. It's too big. In fact, it's so big and I, I haven't I can't assert that this is actually how it works, but Mad Groove won't grab everything on the stage. Like, I think they're, the stage is big enough that it goes outside of its reach. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, That's it's, cool. There's, yeah, the stage is fucking enormous, and there's bosses everywhere. Like, not just, like, the regular boss kind of things that show up. Yeah. Those are also everywhere. But there are, like, specific bosses all over the stage that are bosses from Castlevania. So you, you would look on the map, and there are these red skulls. And when you go there, there's a little you know symbol on the ground. And when you walk over it, a boss character spawns, like some sort of big Castlevania monster. And then you got to fight that. In addition to whatever the hell else you're, the hell else you're battling. That's awesome. Music's fucking incredible. Um, I've only, I've only done two runs so far. I did one run uh, through Halloween, um, because that's about all I had time for. Because people kept showing up. And then uh, later that night, before going to bed, I was like, all right, I just want to jump in here real quick and do, like, a, a small run, because I unlocked my first Belmont. Right. And I was like, yeah, I want to I give this a shot, just to see what it's like. Naturally, I played the full half hour. Because, of course. <laughs> of course. Of course I did. And then I got to bed late, because I'm a goober. Um, so, you know, good times. Uh, but, yeah, Ca- uh, Castlevania was wonderful. And it was it's just a... A lot of things <laughs> were happening in work this week, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to get ahead on the uh, the, the sales for November. Right. And the first one went really smoothly, and now like I'm, there's there's things I need for the next batch, and like we're we're just not quite there. And I'm like I really 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 wanted to have these things done by the end of October. Right. And I only have one done, so let's see if we can push to get everything done by the end of this week at least so that I'm not we're not I'm not working on the next one while the while a sale is currently running right um, right but other, uh, other than that there was a, a product launch I'll talk about and, uh, when we're talking about what's new at Stone Age Gamer um, and just you know lack of sleep and preparing for things I ran um, I was one of the room parents for Ellie's uh, Halloween party at school oh that's exciting it was pretty exciting. I was I was pretty jazzed about doing it. Uh, I signed up for the PTO, and they kind of immediately put me on two of the three parties they had for the rest of the year. I wanted the first one being the Halloween party, and uh, as soon as they sent out the email, this one mom jumped in and said, uh, "If nobody minds, I'll kind of take point on this so we can get organized and go forward." And I was like, "Yeah, sure, go for it. I am here, and I volunteer to make a treat." Like they, she said, here's what we need. Who wants to volunteer to do once? Do what? And I immediately said, I'm going to bake something. I'm going to bake something for this, and I will handle the treat department. And uh, then nobody said anything for like a week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I emailed back and was like, all right, so um, I'm still doing this. Uh, where are we at with all this? And then uh, then uh, sh- the woman who said that she was going to you know, take charge of things, she sent out an email to everybody. And then another lady was just like, oh, I can bring cupcakes. I was like, I covered that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm bringing... I'm baking. I'm, I'm, I'm baking stuff. Like, uh, that's what I wanted to do. And I had a whole plan with Ellie of the thing that we were going to bake. And uh, I also responded immediately. And you guys have all been quiet. So how about no. y'all bring plates? <laughs> <laughs> so what wound up happening was... Uh, you know, she said that I could still bake the thing that I was going to bake and that, you know, she'll bring cupcakes and they got it all figured out. But like this lady brought her cupcakes and I brought my baked goods. Now, let me tell you about my baked goods. All right. Because they were fucking amazing. <laughs> um, 
I got those little Pillsbury cookies, you know, the ones that have like a pumpkin on the in- yeah. middle of them. Yeah, yeah. I get those. I put them on the bottom of a muffin cup, you know, one of those little muffin paper things. Yeah. And then I take a Halloween Oreo. I put that on top of that. And then I fill the rest of the cup with brownie batter. Oh, shit. All throw right. Some, uh, throw some sprinkles on top of that, a little Halloween colored shaped sprinkles. And you've got yourself a like a turducken <laughs> of delicious <laughs> sugary goodness. And they were so fucking tasty. So we get there, and I, 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 one of the first things that we hand out is like we're handing out some napkins, and I was like, I, you know, we, should we hand out the sugar first? It's like, yeah, let's get them sugared up and then play games with them. Yeah. So I hand out my cupcakes, and the kids go fucking crazy over them. Kids are begging me for a second one, like they're absolutely going crazy with them. And I kept, and I was just like, "Oh, there's there's other cupcakes over there. We're gonna do later." They're like, I don't want one of those. I want another one of these. <laughs> I felt like a goddamn superhero. Oh, uh, it's felt the like best a champ. That's right. Oh, I loved it. You should. Kids man. were begging me for more of these things, and nobody liked that lady's cupcakes because it was the, you know, it's like you go to Shoprite and you get like the big like. Yeah. It's like a big slathered, uh, like a big. Ca- it looks like a cake, but it's made out of cupcakes. So yeah, got like like an inch of frosting with like some picture on it or something. None of the kids cared. They just wanted more of uh, my my cupcakes, and I was super proud about that. And then nobody took charge of anything. <laughs> um, so I just took over. <laughs> I was like like right, you do. We're gonna play. We're gonna play a game now. Then and I got everybody's attention. Played with the kids, and they. they one of the moms was looking at. We brought uh, rolls of toilet paper in so that we could do the mummy thing. Where yeah. We would split into teams, and whoever made the best mummy wins. <coughs> and uh, she was looking at it like, oh, I don't know. I think it might be a little chaotic. I think we should skip this one. I was like, hey, kids, who wants who wants chaos? And all the kids were like, chaos! Like, yeah, <laughs> let's do this thing. So I just fucking took charge, and we all played games and had an absolute blast. And it was exhausting, and oh my god, it was... The air conditioning was broken. Now you'd think nice. that wouldn't be a problem on Halloween, in except o- it was <laughs> in o- eighty on goddamn 31st. degrees. Yeah. It was eighty degrees. So this room filled with sweaty children and sweaty me was just—it smelled horrible in there. And everyone was it's way too hot, but it didn't matter. The kids were having a blast. I had a blast. Uh, it was a really, really good time. I'm glad I did it. Uh, and you I'm looking be, forward man. to the next party. You're fucking. You're good dad, dude. You really are. And like, I try. And that's the thing I think maybe that has gotten lost over the last, you know, however many years or whatever. Um, like when you think back to w- when you were in school, like that's the shit you remember. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, there yeah, there might sure. be a lesson or two or a teacher that sticks out. Like Mr. Heidi Mark was my guy. He was a social studies teacher. I fucking love that guy. I, he was just great. I remember lessons that he taught, the whole fucking thing. But for the most part, the shit you remember about school are the, the, the fucking parties when you did the, the cool thing or the parade or the assembly or whatever. Like, those moments are so fucking important. And we've gotten so bogged down with, like, testing and just, you know, rote instruction and these fucking super high intense cra- and like not saying that stuff's not important certainly but <laughs> like kids should be allowed to be kids have some fun you know they should be i am so thrilled that my kid my daughter ellie's teacher doesn't believe in homework yeah and uh, over the moon i absolutely love this woman uh her name is miss smiley and she is great uh she really appreciated us running the party uh and and having a blast in there but like when we did back to school night she talked about how she doesn't believe in homework and she doesn't assign it she thinks it's important the kids they get all the lesson they get all the instruction they need at school yep and when they go home they should be they kids. should be able to go home they should go be kids and god i wish john's teachers felt that way because i know oh man he had a, such a rough week and he's talking about he's got this one teacher that I can't say for sure because we've never actually talked to him about it. Right. But he doesn't like John very much. Sure. Um, uh, you know, John has, you know, he's got some issues. Uh, he says the, what, 504s or whatever yeah. the number is. Sure. Uh, and uh, his teacher doesn't really care for that stuff. He strikes me as the kind of old white dude who thinks, uh, 
Yeah, he thinks that stuff's got all in your head. You right. Know, he doesn't really buy into that nonsense. Right. And I'm like, well, this is this is the way my kid works. So, uh, you know, when when yeah. John, you can does, not selling it. Yeah. You can buy it or, or yeah. not. I'm not selling. Like it, it is yeah. what it is. It's not for sale. This is just the way it is. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, he he had some. Uh, he he had an, uh, some sort of like book assignment thing. He had to yeah. make this little paper book. And uh, he lost it somehow during the school day, so his teacher told him he had to make a new one at home. And now John didn't remember this until it was like a half an hour before his bedtime. Naturally, and he just because he's a kid lost because he's a kid. He lost it. He lost his mind. He was just he couldn't. His teacher was supposed to send him instructions on how to do it because you know it was this whole like paper folding thing. Yeah. He had a very specific instructions on the way it's supposed to look, uh, but his teacher didn't send the instructions, and John was like. He was so upset because he didn't know what was going to happen because he didn't know how he was going to make this because he couldn't remember the specific instructions. And I was like, well, look, he sent you a picture of it. We're just going to figure it out to the best of our ability. He's like, no, it's not going to be good enough. It's got to be the way that he told us to do it. And I'm like, well, he didn't send you instructions and it's due. So we're just going to do the best we can. And if he doesn't think that's good enough, that's on him for not giving you the instructions. Yeah. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. So we start doing this thing. I start, like, taking the lead and kind of figuring out, like, all right, what's the first step? How are we going to do this? And as soon as I did the first step, John was like, I remember everything. <laughs> he remembered every single... The, the, he swore to me he could remember absolutely nothing about how to build this thing. <laughs> not a single step, not a detail, not anything. He remembered nothing. And I was like, I am sure that that is not the case. Right. And then as soon as I did the first step, he's like, that's not right. This is how we're supposed to do it. And then he remembered the whole thing. But the thing that he was, the first step was driving me so freaking crazy because I was like, why are, I don't understand why we're doing this this way. This does, right. like, what are we trying to get to? He's like, well, they need, first off, the paper needs to be folded like this. And then these holes need to match up exactly like this. I'm like, okay, what is the end game though? What are we trying to do? And he wouldn't tell me. He's like, no, we have to do this. And then what you do is you take all the papers out and then you, f you fold it in half and you fold it real tight and then you run it through your lips and then you can tear it apart. I'm like, so we're spitting on our homework. It's like, that's, that's how the teacher said to do it. I'm like, that is some old white guy shit if I ever heard it in my life. Like, yeah, I, okay, it, it technically works, but you're spitting all over your homework. Now you've got your drool all over this paper. I have a paper cutter. Okay, if we we'll needed just, to cut paper in half, I could have done it in seconds. And we've now I, spent 15 minutes folding and licking in paper. In my room, I'll go get it. You just <laughs> and we shoot him in the head. You just don't get it, do you, Scott? <laughs> it was some serious Doctor Evil shit right there. I was, I, I, I was almost at my my supervillain moment. I could not believe. Like, so we're. I'm gonna do it this way, right? I just was like you don't actually need to lick it, right? If you do it back and forth a few more times, yeah. it still comes apart without making the paper wet with your fucking spit, which is a neat trick, I guess. But like, what are we doing here? But also, ew. Yeah, also, ew. Gross. Your teacher really wants to carry this around in post-COVID world? Right? All right. Sure. <laughs> Whatever. He can have your spit all over your homework. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to go ahead and not put your homework in my mouth. <laughs> that you've been touching. Because I don't know where yeah. your hands have been, but you are, in <laughs> fact, a child, and children are disgusting. Yes. Yes, Ugh. they are. Yeah, homework is that stupid. Said, nobody should, homework nobody is stupid. should have it. I hate it. It's dumb. It's dumb, and it also, breeds a culture of uh, bringing your work life home with you as well. Yes, yes, because John, he just wants to come home and be a kid. He wants to build yep. Legos and goof around and be lost in his own world. Yeah. And he's got, like, sometimes he has, like, his entire after school is just taken up by long division. He'll just be sitting there doing long division for, like, hours, and it's, come on. Yeah. This is, this is awful, this poor kid. Yeah. It's not cool. And I thought when I was a kid, well, maybe it's just because I'm a kid that I hate homework, right? Of course I hate homework. I, they're telling me to do it, and I don't want to do it because I'm the kid. But now I'm a grown-up, and I hate it just as much. I hate it exactly as much yeah. as I hated when I was a kid. Yeah, it's the worst. It's fucking stupid. Yeah. It stinks, and I hate it. <laughs> no, sir, I don't like Anyways. it. Anyways. Uh, did, uh, did you play any other games this week, or you've been... 
Oh. Not really, not really up to it. Not, not really up to it, man. Like my hand is still kind of fucked up from the uh, from the neuropathy. Like that's gonna take a little bit to like wear back off now. Um, so I can't really like hold anything for too long. Um, like I played, uh, I played, you know, a little bit of Snap. I started uh, a little bit of the uh, the Pokemon Pocket. Um, just trying to see how that is, and it's I don't. I'll be able to talk more about it next week. You know what I mean? I think I'd be able to put a little gotcha. bit more time in and into it. But so far, it's good. I'm sure it's going to make a, just a fucking stupid amount of money. Um, oh, without a doubt. Yeah, like it's it's simple. It's it's a simplified version of po- of Pokemon, which is great. Um, it's accessible. It's easy to get into. Uh, they do a decent job. Like, well, I, I basically got through the t- tutorial shit. Um, and was like, okay, that's that's about all I have time for. Um, that's really about it, man. I really haven't done much this week other other than just get incredibly depressed about baseball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Um, I mean, I, my team was already out, so I didn't really have a didn't sure. really have much of a dog in the fight. But uh, I understood. I understand when your team goes out like that. Yeah, it just I mean at least you didn't you didn't lose to the Mets. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> oh boy. Well, let's see. Uh, I played some more Zelda. Um I fought I fought the uh, this game's Volvagia, which was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um so I'm getting there. Uh, I think I'm I think I'm coming close to the end game if I had to venture a guess. It still remains very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got my copy of Prince of Persia in the mail. I obviously haven't played it yet, but that showed up. Nice. Uh, and with it, I also got a Samus ornament. Ooh. Uh, that was the last year's Hallmark had a, a Hallmark Samus ornament. Uh, they had them on like super sale at uh, Amazon, and I was like, okay, I'll get a Samus ornament for sure. twelve bucks. Why not? And it showed up, and it's it's much better looking in person than I had seen. Uh, the um. What's it? I saw pictures of it online. It just looked like a really shitty bright orange paint job, uh, but it doesn't look like that in person. It actually looks really nice, so I'm pretty pretty happy about that. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I also played, like I said, I played the Vampire Survivors. We talked about that a little bit, but uh, uh, one of the cooler things that I played, we, uh, you know, I think I can actually save that for a little bit later. I'll, I'll hold off on that because uh, uh, that's going to be one of our news stories. Oh, so. okay. I don't think I have anything else I need to talk about right now. Like I'm, I feel like I'm forgetting something else that happened in my week. Like I put away all the Halloween decorations today. I was just exhausted all week, and I didn't get very far in my uh my Mario script. I'm still I'm struggling on this Mario script. It's I'm trying to connect the dots with uh I just finished writing about Super Mario Deluxe, and now I'm trying to connect the dots on how to get to from Super Mario Brothers Deluxe. To Super mm-hmm. Mario Advance, and that's the uh, that's the Space World 2000 right there in the middle. Yeah, and like yeah. I wrote all this all this stuff about like you know the Game Boy Advance's development and whatnot. And I was like, I don't need any of this. I'm telling a Mario story. I need historical context. I don't yeah. need all of the historical context. <laughs> so I wrote a bunch of shit, and I was like, I'm deleting all this. I don't need it. It's it's gonna bog down the video. Yeah, stop doing this <laughs> and. Uh, um, but I also like fell down this hole of uh, recently on YouTube, like within the last year, a couple of years, people have posted some extremely high resolution, like really high quality footage from Space World 2000. Oh, that's like cool. The, that Zelda yeah. fighting Ganon with the sword fight thing. Like, yeah, yeah. Extremely just just direct feed, gorgeous looking footage of that. And it's it's been really fun, like kind of falling down that hole. But as far as I can tell at Space World, right, because I think what I... Well, I have to go to think. Here's the thing. So I need to get from uh, Super Mario Brothers Deluxe on Game Boy Color to Mario Advance on Game Boy Advance. Okay. But then this GameCube stuff happens in between, right? Right. So it's Space World 2000. Like, here's the Game Boy Advance, but here's the GameCube. The Game Boy Advance stuff was super cool, but the GameCube was, that was the thing, right? That right. Zelda battle, seeing Metroid Prime, theoretically, for the right. very first time. Like, Samus running, like, that was, that was the shit. So I have to, like... I have to touch on that, but also touch on the Game Boy Advance part of it and without making the Game Boy Advance part seem too small. But also, like, as far as I can tell, 
at Space World, right? They had that whole reel of the GameCube games. Right. Including Luigi's Mansion, which is what I need to get to. Right. But the only footage I can find from Space World of Game Boy Advance games is Mario Kart and F-Zero. And it's that, that strikes me as wrong. So, oh, man, I'm, I'm, who I'm, knows? Yeah, I mean, they could have just, they, that could have just been it. Like, it I, been. I found it, footage certainly. of, like, a, a meeting room where they were showing it off, and they were showing, like, here's the Game Boy Advance, here's how it, c- it plugs into the GameCube, we haven't figured out what we're doing with that yet, but it's a thing that can happen. <laughs> and, but somebody uh, will figure it out. And they showed them playing Mario Kart, they showed them showing F-Zero, and that was it. And then at the actual presentation, because somebody has the full, like, here's their presentation... And yeah. it's like, here's this cool Game Boy Advance thing where there's a little bit of footage of Mario Kart, but it's all about the system and its buttons and its shape. And then it was just, here's the GameCube thing. And like, holy shit. Right. So, I don't know. It's, it's, it is proving challenging for me to write that in an entertaining way. I'm, 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 having, I'm struggling so hard to find the damn through line, partly because I'm so exhausted, um, but partly because it's just kind of a weird... It's a weird history for a weird spot in history for me to focus on mm-hmm. because my focus on that, like Super Mario One Twenty Eight, was like the least interesting thing to me. It yeah, Metroid I, and Zelda was like that's the shit. And man, when I when I did that part in my Zelda history, that was so, so much exciting. fun. I yeah. loved doing it. That was so exciting. I captured that excitement, but there wasn't really any excitement for Mario there. Like, no, it was just kind Mario of like Advance, a thing. And then, like, it's coming eventually. Like, shut up. We'll get to it. Yeah, like, it wasn't even a game. It's like, here's a tech... Like, the only yeah. Mario they showed was that tech demo that was Mario 128. Yeah. And I can't see any footage of Mario Advance there at all. Um, which is weird. Like, this whole presentation, the Luigi's Mansion was the... Like, the, there was Pokemon, Luigi's Mansion, right. Zelda, uh, and then, like, you know, uh, Joanna Dark, uh, <laughs> yeah. some race cars. Like, it was... Really interesting stuff. That rebirth thing that never turned into a game. Utterly fascinating. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like that little like, weird T shaped tree mm-hmm. thing. It was super weird looking, but yeah, never turned into anything. So it's very interesting. So I keep falling into these weird holes and then not writing anything, but <laughs> That's what she said. Oh my god, I'm so thirsty. That's what she said. All right. Well, in that case, we're gonna take ourselves a quick break. And uh actually we had so here's the deal. We had an email. That I was going to get to, uh, but I think we're going to hold off on it in the interest of keeping this uh, episode a bit tighter. Okay. Uh, and Devin Cooley is who sent the email, and he's not going to know because he is the guy who started listening to the podcast from episode one back in July. Oh and yeah. Just about. So uh, we're going to do in the not too distant future a, a actual mailbag episode. So I think because I don't think Devin's going to catch up by then. I forget what episode he told us he was on, but he's still got a ways to go. Sure. Uh, so I think we're going to include Devin's email in our mailbag in a future episode and do it that way. So with cool. that, uh, we'll be back in a little bit. You're listening to the Stone Age Gamer podcast from geekade.com. Stick around. And now here's a quick look at what's new from us and our partners at geekade.com. Uh, first up, it's no longer Halloween. The ween has been hollowed. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't still listen to spooky music. Matt and Chris, and by that I mean Matt, uh, has put together his second annual Halloween mixtape featuring spine-tingling tunes that are sure to get you into the holiday spirit. No, not that holiday, asshole. The one that just passed. Don't miss Turning Tracks episode 24, Halloween Mixtape Volume 2. Next... It's no longer Halloween, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't still listen to spooky music. <laughs> Matt and Chris, and by that I mean me, has put together the show's 10th annual Halloween spooky special, featuring spine-tingling tunes that are sure to get you into the holiday spirit. No, not that holiday, the one that just passed. Don't miss Waveback, episode 179, Spooky <laughs> Special 10. It's right in front of me and I didn't even fucking read it. <laughs> I just looked at the first one. Finally, it's no longer Halloween, the ween has been hollowed. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't still listen to spooky podcasts. Andy and Ryan, and by that I mean Andy and Ryan, have put together their 189th episode of their podcast, probably not featuring spine-tingling tunes that are sure to get you into the holiday spirit. No, not that holiday spirit, the one that just passed. Don't miss Weekend Rental episode 189, The Gamers Join the Force. 
I'm so sad I can only use that trick once. <laughs> For all this and more from us and our partners, be sure to keep your eyes on geekade.com. That's super funny. Alright, everybody, we are back. Go back to talking uh, like a fucking here. 1940s guy. <laughs> see? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen just as an aside, have you seen Shane Gillis do his uh his bit about Jackie Robinson? No. I don't uh, even know who that is. Shane Gillis is, is he's this pretty funny stand up comedian. He does a really good uh Trump impersonation. He's really fucking funny. Um he's got this one bit where he's talking about how white people used to be cool and the moment that they stopped being cool was the moment was Jackie Robinson coming into the major leagues and he's like like go back and listen to it you can hear it they're on the radio they're like man see well here comes that colored boy for brooklyn no way he can hit old curly's fastball we'll see what he ah fuck home run okay never mind shit we're done and nobody ever talked like that again <laughs> from that moment on that waiver man see fuck oh, okay fuck that's gone shit all right it's really fucking fun. shane gillis very very funny anyway he does it better than I do because he wrote it, and I'm not a comedian. Well, uh, let's see here. <laughs> we have, uh, uh, we'll talk about what's new at Stone Age Gamer this week, and what's new is Vengeance Hunters. Vengeance Hunters is a new Neo Geo game from Nalua Studio, uh, and it is a, it's a, it's a it, I don't know, homebrew is really the word. It's not like one dude in a garage. Right. Uh, it was made by a team. Uh, it's a little, it is a new Neo Geo game. It's a little bit more than a homebrew, but not quite an indie. No, I think, it, yeah, I think indie is actually the right word. Is it? I think okay. indie is the right word, yeah. Because um, uh, it's a, you know, it's a new beat-em-up, and it's, uh, it looks it's awesome. on a Neo Geo. It does. It's on a Neo Geo cartridge, which we are selling pre-orders for at Stone Age Gamer. We're handling uh, some North American distribution for that. Uh, but it's also on all the other systems, like PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, and Nintendo Switch, and Steam. And um, we've been uh, kind of working on getting that listing up, which was part of the stress of my day yesterday, because <laughs> it went up uh, incorrectly a couple of different ways that we had to go back and fix. But uh, we're, we're, we're taking pre-orders on the regular and the limited edition. Um uh, and it's it's pretty neat. It's a thing that we're involved in, and uh, I've been reaching out to people to, to offer review codes. Um, I'm not going to review it myself, because mm -hmm. it seems like a conflict of interest. Sure. Since I work for the company that's distributing it, I probably shouldn't be reviewing it. So uh, hopefully somebody on our staff at Nintendo Force will do a review for it or something like that. We'll see. But yeah, Vengeance Hunters, that's been uh, prepping for that and you know continuing to work on the sales. It's been my week. So... That's, That's what's awesome. doing Stone Age Gamer. Yeah, it which looks, means it it looks really, time, really great. Man. I'm really excited about this one. As, and well, you should be, because beat em ups are awesome. They are. There's a lot of them out right now. But yes. anyway, it is time for my favorite segment, your favorite segment, everyone's favorite segment. It is time to strap yourselves in for week old news. Welcome to week old news, where we talk about all the news that was new a week ago. And first, first up, oh, first up, I have to say. I'm a dumbass, uh, and I figured out how to make Week Old News not be me rooting through an entire weeks of news in a day before uh, sure. writing the script for the podcast. I I just bookmark the news stories I see throughout the week, and then I choose from those bookmarks. There, there you go. I like that. It's, it's, it's right. It's, it's, it's about the dumbest thing for me to not have thought of months ago. Sure. <sighs> Better late than never, I suppose. Anyway, IGN reports <laughs> Better Nate Apple than making Apple making Oregon Trail movie that will be an action comedy with Barbie style musical numbers. I mean, that <laughs> actually sounds like a really great fucking idea to me. <laughs> the subtitle of this article is "Get in, loser. We're going to die of dis." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, see, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Soul. Yeah. Um. Can it have the, Can it have the Rock and Kevin Hart in it, please? Please no. No, oh, come on. How dare you? I don't find Kevin Hart nearly as amusing as you do. Oh my god, I fucking love Kevin Hart so much. I don't know why. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I, I'm I'm fascinated by this story. I, I I hope it's good, right? Because when you say it's Barbie style with music with musical numbers, like when you say that it could be like 
this thing was successful, what else can we apply this exact formula yeah. to? Whereas, like, we got, like, well, Guardians of the Galaxy was really successful. So now we're going to make a bunch of stuff where people talk like Guardians of the Galaxy. But we've never seen Guardians of the Galaxy. We just think we know what they sound like. Right. And we don't have the same talent involved, so it's going to just sound horrible. Uh, I'm hoping that this actually winds up being something really cool because, well, it could be. There's, yeah, there is an I, there's awful so much lot potential of there. promise here. Yes, yeah. there's a lot of promise in this. <laughs> I, I love the idea. I think, uh, I, I honestly think, because they just announced that they're uh, going into production... Uh, soon on Jumanji 3. Um, yeah, so yeah. Jumanji with The Rock and Kevin Hart and Karen Gillan and Jack Black. I think they should make both movies at the same time. Like that entire cast should do Jumanji 3 and the fucking Oregon Trail musical just at the same time. I'm super into this idea. Here's an idea that I'm not super into. <laughs> time Extension reports, <clears throat> quote, The project is a complete scam. The internet isn't convinced by the Super Sega FPGA console. Have you heard of this thing? I have not. I have not really been on the internet this week either. I, like, so all of this is also news to me. Right. So this actually has been around for this has been this was announced a little while ago. Okay. Uh, it is the the Super Sega system, which is an FPGA system. Uh, where one, and like an all-in-one system that plays all of your uh, Master System, I want to say Master System, Genesis, Game Gear, Saturn, and Dreamcast. Basically everything, uh, Sega CD, everything yeah. except 32X. That's cool. Uh, in a single system, yeah. which seems like a great idea. Sure. Um, it's not... Uh, it, it's not sponsored by Sega. Like, Sega's not involved. Of course. They're calling it the Super Sega System. They are selling something with the word Sega in it, just flagrantly standing directly in the face of copyright law, being like, yeah. "Fuck you." So uh, people seem to think this is a this is some sort of scam. It's, it's vaporware. Is it ever going to actually happen? Like, um, let's see. Perhaps the most withering takedown of the entire project comes from Kevtris, the, develop, uh, the developer behind, behind Analog's FPGA consoles. Posting on the Atari Age forums, he pulls the project apart quite ruthlessly. That PCB is not running any games and cannot run a single game. It is missing everything. There's no power supplies to run the FPGA. There's no RAM. They do show a DDR3 or DDR4 RAM module plugged in, but it's not connected to the FPGA and is simply too far away from it to actually function if it was even hooked up. That speed of light there is no hdmi drivers of any kind just everything is missing that is required to make it work if you give these dorks money you most likely are not going to see it again and you won't be getting an fpga system that works unless they totally redesign it it's like they showed off this board right and look i know almost nothing about boards right yeah. I, that's that's not my expertise we know, fuck all between the two of us we well, yeah know we nothing. probably adds up to a, approximately fuck all yeah um However, even I can look at this thing and say, something is wrong. And I'll just explain it to you. The board is almost all solid green. Nope. <laughs> I know enough like, to know that in the repair videos I've watched, be lots in the of cleaning, little lines and dots doodads and doodads all over, yeah. right? Lots of, lots <laughs> of whirly like gigs and, and twisty doos and little nubbins i don't know what they do little i don't know what those nubbins. things do but yeah. i know they like yeah the little silver nubbins all over the place yeah. and they're connected with lines that are slightly darker green yeah like little, there's little like hershey kisses kisses that are just there's like delicately on the board lots. little l like gold holes bunch of places you know yeah it, there's yeah, just darker, like a whole right, lot of solid green, green doing other stuff yeah. Yeah. This no, is a this lot is very of solid green that we are talking right now. This is very, mm -hmm. very we good are, information. We are professionals and we know what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm just saying, even as somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about, this does not look okay. Right. <laughs> like, this just looks like somebody glued a bunch of shit to <laughs> something else. And are, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm looking at the picture and like... I cannot believe what I'm looking at right here. So yeah, it's, it's a, this is a weird thing that's happening in the retro gaming space huh. right here. I, I I cannot imagine it's a good idea to like actually use the word Sega in your. It doesn't product, seem to right? to be a good like a good idea. The, our our Se uh, Sega Genesis uh, flash cart, the Mega SD. Yeah, right. That doesn't. It says Mega. This is for the Mega Drive, right? The the. Uh, 
the EverDrive, uh, the the Mega EverDrive. They don't we. Don't, Sega's copyrighted. You yeah, can't just sell products that say Sega on them if you're not still Sega. There's a company that, that puts out things. That. Yeah. I feel like somebody at some point is going to say, you should know. Give us money or stop doing this. <laughs> One of the two. How about both? <sighs> Give us money and stop doing this, you assholes. Yeah, there you go. Both at the same time. <laughs> uh, let's moving on. Uh, this 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 story makes me pretty mad. Time Extension reports the U.S. Copyright Office doesn't want to give you access to video game yeah, history. That's weird. This is this was a really sad story. So the Video Game History uh, History Foundation has been trying to basically fight for the right to have a video game library, like to have games be treated like movies and music and books right in libraries and um that's the the, the u.s copyright office um uh, let's see the the quote from their twitter uh post says today the u.s copyright office announced that it would not support the needs of libraries and archives to increase access to video game history leaving over 87 percent of classic games legally inaccessible through any practical means. While we are disappointed, the fight is not over. See our full statement here. Um, basically, what this all came down to, uh, I'm trying to find like the 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 right way of saying this. Um, once again, it falls to emulation and illegal ROM sites to per, to preserve video game history. The industry itself clearly isn't interested. Quote, the game industry's absolutist position forces researchers to explore extra-legal methods to access the vast majority of out-of-print out -print video games that are otherwise unavailable. Uh, and, and I think it, their decision all came down to, like, uh, no. Like, there wasn't, like, a whole lot of reasoning behind it. They were just like, nah, no, the, the people, well, we people could play games for fun. Like, that, no. <laughs> we, but people can rent bar like doing research for books you could also grab a book for fun while you're doing that like it's it's okay if people enjoy these things right uh, especially the stuff that's not in print right for I, i'm it's weird at a certain point this is this is artistic medium this is history right right this is the at same a certain point thing it, it as, is now uh, yeah, exactly now is that point it's just, just like movies and just like music just like any other artistic output video games are like that yes yeah. a lot of them are junk a lot sure. of movies are junk a lot of tv shows are <laughs> junk it doesn't really mean bad that they movies. don't yeah there's a lot of really bad video games too but i but that's it. i i what i was gonna say is we, we've talked about this before i think the last time it came up um because there are a couple like lobbying groups that go out there and they're like no this is a terrible idea don't ever do it and like they go to fucking like they go and lobby against this shit, and it's it's just a really weird place. And it, yeah, like it's it's why shim emulation exists and will continue to exist because there yeah, are there's... thousands and thousands, if not millions, of people who have all the video games fucking archived. They've got them. Yeah, they're out there. You but know? wouldn't it be great if they didn't need to do it through some sort of weird illegal means, like? Yeah. This, the, the 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 potential that a company could theoretically lose money because if somebody might not buy this old game on their old service if they can get it out of the library for free and we can't have that but we would have that Come with movies sales and books on Custer's forever in 2024. like are you out of your mind yeah. like you can go rent movies from your local library for free yeah you can. You've been able to do it for ages, and it's not like the movie industry has stopped because CDs of that. And DVDs and records. Exactly. And you can get all kinds of stuff from libraries. They're libraries important. are great. Yeah. And video games should be a part of that. They should and be. And the fact that they're not allowed to. It's weird. Is it's weird to me. It's all obscene. I don't think it's it'll weird. be that way forever. I actually don't think it'll be that way for too much longer, honestly. But it is very, very strange. It is very, very strange. Moving on, Go Nintendo reports fan remakes Super Mario Brothers for Game Boy Color in the style of Super Mario Land. So this is called Super Mario Brothers Mini. Have you seen this? I saw a little bit of it. It looks really cool. It's pretty wild. So Super Mario Brothers Deluxe was on Game Boy Color, right. but it had the issue of it being the NES game, and like you had to zoom in the camera. So this person basically took the dimensions of Mario Land. 
and made every like shrunk everything down. So the sprites are even less detailed than they were in the original <laughs> game. But it's um but spatially it works. Yeah. proportionally it is Super Mario Brothers, but it plays like kind of more like Super Mario Land. This is the other game that I played. I downloaded it and on my Game Boy Color, I uh, sorry on my on my EverDrive and I right. was playing around with it for a while. Uh and it's really hard to play because the physics are like Super Mario Land. So I'm Which trying to get through this. I think game. it's one of those things you don't realize <laughs> is different until you try to play it's a game so you know. Different. It, yeah. I died so many times on the most basic shit because, like, I have this muscle memory for Super Mario Brothers, and this is just the physics are completely different. So it kind of nuts kind of threw me for a loop. But there's there's a lot more to it than it just being Super Mario Brothers. They added like a whole basically second quest to it with all these bosses from Super Mario Land and oh, that's all so new cool. stages. And you can you can ride Yoshi like in Super Mario World, except <laughs> Yoshi's got a double jump. Um, so yeah, it's got like a whole second quest mode, basically. And the bosses are pretty neat. They, they did a pretty creative job of trying to make the bosses work in... It's within context of Super Mario Brothers, like you fight Tatanga, you fight Wario. That's awesome. Um, you fight like a, a Giga Bowser at the end. Nice. That sounds <laughs> really, pretty. really cool. Yeah, it's definitely well worth checking out. I, I, I think it is a more fascinating project than a fun one. Uh, to sure, be honest, because like you know, Super Mario Brothers exists uh, not on Game Boy Color. Super Mario Brothers exists on Game Boy Color. I, right. I, I still think Super Mario Brothers Deluxe is the better game, but that was made by Nintendo as a fan project. You would, you this would is hope. really freaking cool. <laughs> yeah, this is this is really really freaking cool. It's a really neat idea. Um, and uh, I definitely, definitely recommend seeking it out. It's well worth your time. It just really pissed me off. <laughs> the <laughs> physics, the physics pissed me off so bad because I know, um, I I know uh, Super Mario Brothers so well. But yeah, this is good stuff. That's right. Well done, Internet. You remain, you remain undefeated. Uh, now, speaking of, uh, I forget what we were just uh, about things potentially changing. Yeah. Uh, Polygon reports Tim Walls finally flexed his crazy taxi skills over the weekend. Uh, so uh, Tim Walls and AOC did a yeah. The 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 lengths the lengths that uh, uh candidates are going through to appeal to uh. Uh, youngins, Gen Z, uh, the youngins, yeah, are out of Youths. control, and uh, they, uh, they, uh, Tim Walls and AOC jumped on Twitch and were streaming Madden, and then uh, he started playing Crazy Taxi. <laughs> it's fucking it was awesome. Really funny. That's great. Yeah, that was great. And I mentioned this because the, I think this is the first time we've had an actual like vice presidential candidate playing, cra- uh, playing Dreamcast. Yeah, like for sure. Just on stream, like he wasn't great at it, but he, you know, he's played it before. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. So, uh, that yeah, was AO- that was pretty wild. AOC did the uh, the Among Us stuff a couple years ago. Yeah. She was jumping on yeah, there, but she, like she's young and she hip, has, and like exactly, she's you know. younger than he is uh, <laughs> for for sure. But this was also uh, there was a similar thing. The uh, was it uh, the I want to say the Biden campaign. Did, uh, after the last election, they did an Animal Crossing village, and this time, uh, yeah. the Harris campaign did a Fortnite stage. Yeah, they've got a uh, Fortnite thing. Really... It's just one of those weird things of like, and this isn't even, um, I mean, fuck it, whatever, don't vote for Trump, but like, could you even imagine, like, Trump or Vance? Just being a normal person that plays a video game. You didn't even need the rest of that sentence. No, <laughs> sure. But like, that's the fucking wildest thing about about the fucking gremlins that are in that party currently. Of like, I just I can't even imagine you doing anything normal. Just a normal like you're sitting on the couch watching TV and like you scratch your balls. Like even that seems far fetched. Like. <laughs> It's fucking weird, man. Anyway. Yeah. Tim Walls is great. Love that guy. Yeah. Time extension reports. Speaking of weird. <laughs> see if I can get through this with a straight face. After the epic failure of the Intellivision Amico, Tommy Tallarico's new goal is <laughs> becoming that. a backgammon legend. I saw that. That was posted. At the, I think that was shared in our Discord. And I managed to, uh, to like, read through that article. Um... Yeah, at fuck, like, 
I'm sorry your dad died, but you're still a fucking twat. You That's kind of where I'm at, like, on one hand. Good for you, you found something that yeah, you sure. can That's do awesome. with your life that isn't taking advantage of people. Yeah, it's great. <clears throat> and good for you for getting good enough at backgammon to be able to compete in a tournament. You still did all those things. Yeah, you're still a fucking scumbag who stole a bunch of money from a bunch of people. And you that's still not fucking lied cool. for years about your involvement in various projects. Yeah. You made yourself seem like a much bigger deal than you ever were. You're still a scumbag. Uh, At the smartest good line for you, I guess? that has ever been said on television was uttered by I don't even know what character on fucking Brooklyn Nine Nine. Uh, stuff can be two things. Yeah, stuff can be two things. Stuff can be two things. Like, that sucks, dude. Like, I'm sorry your dad died, and I'm, you know, like, I'm happy for you, but but also, fuck you. You're a dick, and you should apologize. At the very least, at the very least, you should apologize. Yeah, but he's not gonna. He's he's now moved on to this. Yeah. And the and television amico continues to not exist. Ah, time extension reports, Castlevania is getting a musical. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Castlevania will get literally anything before it gets a new game. Before it gets a new fucking game. I know. Ugh. Castlevania Awakening of the Moon will be performed by the Flower Troupe, led by C. Nagatsuki. K. Suzuki is handling the script and direction, as was the case with the musicals based on the Ace Attorney series and the Sengoku Basara, both of which were also performed by Tarak. Takarazuka, Takarazuka Review. That's awesome. It's great. <laughs> Fantastic. More of that. Put it in English. Bring it over here. Pile it on. Yep. I'd I'm pay to just... go see it. Yeah. I'll see a Castlevania musical. Yeah. Sign me the hell up. What is a man but a miserable pile of <laughs> secrets? But enough talk. How about you? How about you? <laughs> is that what it's going to be like? A fucking <laughs> an Andrew Lloyd Webber yeah. bullshit. I fucking hate Andrew I hope Lloyd so. Webber. I so hope much. it's basically just cats. How about you? How about you? How about you? Like fucking. Oh God. Speaking of <laughs> Castlevania, uh, you actually brought this up to me. This isn't a new story. I couldn't find an actual story <clears throat> about this, but That's a mysterious a... store is selling yeah. a 46 LP vinyl That's set awesome. of all of Castlevania's music for $550, which is a lot of money, but is actually a pretty solid deal. But as one, really of our, uh, like... uh, one, of, one of the folks in our Discord pointed out, this is an ugly ass box set. Uh, it's not beautiful. Certainly. Um, you know, art is in the eye of the beholder and all of that, but there, there's so much gorgeous Castlevania art, like, like pretty universally agreed upon gorgeous Castlevania artwork. Um, and that's not what they went with. They went uh, in a different direction. Yeah, they hired I don't think it's an ugly. artist. I didn't think it was ugly at first uh, because of the zoomed out pictures. And then when I zoomed in on the pictures when somebody in the Discord pointed out that, it, you know, they wished it looked better and I zoomed in and I thought, no, I don't want this. <laughs> I, I, I mean, yes, I don't you think do. I would like to own. Yes, you would. I mean, I like, do. Like, come on. <laughs> that's a fucking stupid thing to say out loud with your mouth to people well, where they can the hear thing. it. Well, that's the thing. I do, I do and I don't, right? I passed on the Dracula's Curse vinyl because I did not like the artwork. Sure. I love the Dracula's Curse soundtrack, and it would be great to sure. have that on record, but I really didn't like the artwork that they went with on that, so I passed on that one. This, it, Castlevania music is amazing, but this has everything. This has the X68000 stuff. I know, this has so the great. Adventure Rebirth. It's this amazing. is Legends for Game Boy 64. Like, this has everything. The freaking MSX game. Like it's it's every Castlevania game is in here. I'm not going to listen to all of that. I mean, I'm I'm going to listen to some of it, but I have the sound. I have the Castlevania soundtracks that I go back to, and there's a lot here that I would never listen to. Like I just I'm never putting on the Castlevania Legends soundtrack. There are some awesome compositions in there, but the sound is terrible. Like the, sure. the instrumentation <clears throat> they used on the Game Boy was awful, and it didn't need to be. Because Castlevania The Adventure is Sounds good. a shit game, but it has an amazing soundtrack. Yeah. Then you go to Belmont's Revenge, which is a way better game, 
uh, with great compositions, but again, they use this really crunchy sound, and it just doesn't sound good coming out of the Game Boy. There's a lot of Castlevania music in here that I would never touch, so yeah, I actually don't think I do want this. I want to want it. I mean, uh, but at but the end of the day, again, if we're being honest, if we were, if you or I were in the position where five hundred and fifty dollars was not a thing. Right. Oh, question. yeah. If if money was no ob- object, without question, absolutely, I'd buy this. Right. But for the amount of money, even though it is a pretty solid deal, it is like whatever. Who I forget who broke it down on the Discord, but like twelve bucks an LP. It's like, that's yeah, it's like twelve bucks an LP. Cheap, that's great, considering yeah what LPs go for. But I, it's just absurd. Like it's an absurd thing to exist. Yeah, like they haven't even <laughs> reissued these games like there are a ton of games in here that konami has never reissued and the tons of people have never played who's played vampire killer on msx almost nobody in america has well yeah but he's not in north america (laughs) that that's just not a thing that exists here in america like there's a ton of games on like eight people have played castlevania the adventure rebirth more than eight people should have played Castle. That's for sure. Rebirth. It's really good because it's actually a really good game. I but think here we are. I do think this falls under. Um, we were talking about like last week or the week before, or whatever. The the one dude from Limited Run who was like, "This is not like we sell these things um, because we know they're not going to ever be listened to or played. Like this is an investment to resell." or just a collector's piece because I am an absurd collector and I have to have there there has to be levels in the collector market because then otherwise how can you separate your shit from somebody else's shit you know what I mean like if we just all have video games then okay we're all video game collectors but I'm a fancy man so I also have statues and fucking this $550 box set because isn't this fucking crazy you know, my my buddy John is a Metallica super fan. Like flew out to Los Angeles for the second time they did the uh the Symphony Metallica thing, which I can't remember the fucking name of right now. Um but like he flew out to Los Angeles to see them do it live by himself. Like he just went from New Jersey to California and bought a ticket and sat there by himself and was just like this is amazing. Um he does not own a record player. Uh, he it, he is an audiophile to like <clears throat> just a ridiculous degree as far as like digital and speakers and just thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and always has been his entire life. You know, what's the next? What's the best? What's the greatest? He owns all of the Metallica box sets on vinyl. Just because that makes him a bigger fan than somebody else. You know? Sheridan has uh, he was just talking to me earlier today about the uh, he has been buying the Rocky soundtracks on vinyl <laughs> doesn't have he a record player, record player. now nah, of course <laughs> nope but like I could see Sheridan <laughs> hanging those up on the wall you know like it's a big that's piece of artwork thing. and that's he like... collects he collects every he's trying to collect every Stallone video game ever <laughs> like he's just that's a great. big Stallone fan sure, so, who like... isn't <laughs> fucking love that guy Fucking why. Guys all time. <laughs> Moving on. Nintendo Life reports Yakuza Kiwami is supposedly, quote, selling like crazy on Switch. Who could have ever <laughs> fucking guessed? Who would have known? Whoever would have figured that the Yakuza games would sell really well on Switch. Oh, yeah. Everybody. 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 Except... Was it uh, two years ago? Uh, they, one of the people at uh, at at Sega or in charge of the, the the team, they said that the Switch was for kids and Yakuza games. Yakuza games are not going to come to it because you know who the hell would kids. buy them? The Switch yeah. is for kids. And this all stemmed out of you know being butthurt because the Wii U games were a failure. Right. Like, well, you know, the Wii U was a failure. Uh, I'm <laughs> yeah, sorry, that's, but... that's not really the game's fault. I don't think. Yeah, that's not saying that your games are not going to sell to the Switch audience. And they said this after Doom, yeah. after Grand Theft Auto. Like, 
all these games were showing up on the Switch and selling really well, and they were like, no, fuck it, this is for kids. <laughs> well, guess the fuck what? <laughs> you were very wrong. I just wanted to be petty and point that out. That's all the only <laughs> that story's in here. Okay. Fucking Looney Tunes. Now put uh, the rest of them on there. Right. I'm not gonna play them, but other they're people not gonna are very you, happy they're there. Certainly, clearly. but they're not gonna, yeah, I'm not. I am not the audience. No. Speaking of not being the audience, IGN reports Ubisoft just quietly launched a full-blown NFT game. I, we're still doing that. No, we're not. Nobody's <laughs> doing this. I don't know why Ubisoft is doing this. Yeah. The article says, three years ago, Ubisoft promised it would start making its own blockchain games. Now it appears to have done it, having stealth launched a full-blown Web 3 game last week called Champions Tactics Gimoria Chronicles on PC. It's not enough names. It needs a couple more <laughs> words in there. <sighs> Fuck Ubisoft. <laughs> Fuck Ubisoft. What do you... Mm. NFT, this is all garbage. This is all garbage, and so we've all dumb. moved on. So what are you dumb. doing? We've all moved on. I know. God. Crazy. Fucking whack jobs. Moving <laughs> on. Ah, okay. Just getting my bearings for this one. This is a, okay. this is a beefy one. Oh, a beefy whack job? Uh, it's like my Friday is, nights is, after the podcast. beefy is story over. right here. Okay. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know that this is actually... All right, let's start with this one. Okay. Kotaku reports, Sony shuts down studio behind Concord less than two years after buying it. We just said on the show pretty recently, yeah. I think you had just said you were pretty sure it's going to come back as a free-to-play thing. I, no, they are throwing the I'm baby shocked. out with the bathwater. I, I am they, I, legitimately, I'm shocked. I'm shocked, too. I am shocked. I didn't know how they could possibly salvage it because everything about this game looked like garbage to me, and nobody seemed to want it. Um, but yeah, they nuked the whole thing. They killed the studio, and the game is not coming back. It's just wild. The first story that I brought how up. How bad could Concord's, it have been? Like, I obviously didn't thing, play it, I don't, but like, how bad could it have been? I don't think the game... The game was not bad. It was unnecessary. There was no market for it. Uh, yeah. Because the market I mean, for this game has been filled. Except this is a new one with a bunch of really poorly designed generic ass characters. There were no appealing characters in it. And it was one of those. Exactly what I was talking about before. This is this smells like a boardroom somewhere said make them talk like Guardians of the Galaxy. So it's just all quips. This guy uses hot sauce. That's his, he's, he's he's got a personality. Look at he's got hot sauce, right? Yeah. How quirky and quippy they are. Oh my goodness, I just love them. He uses hot sauce. That's but so still, weird. But still, <gasps> I, I I'm sh shocked. shocked. Shocked that there's not even an attempt at free to play. You know, Concord's initial, according to IGN, Concord's initial development deal was two hundred million dollars, but it wound up costing Sony much more. <sighs> Just an obscenely large budget for a game that took them years to make, that would have possibly had a chance if it had come out a couple of years ago. Sure, but that that market's gone now. They missed the boat, and then they released it to. A market that nobody, a market that uh, just doesn't exist anymore. That's it weird. was all. It was a terrible plan from start to finish. It was all just. This was all Sony chasing a trend, yeah, and being way too slow because it took so much time to build this thing, and it was clearly focus tested to death. Yeah, and it could it have been just resistance or so calm, and it would have been right. fine. There like was something about that we read something played, recently about you um, know I read something about Killzone. That's right. The, the, Killzone. The, the, yeah, Gorilla. The company that makes Killzone were were they were asked why they don't make Killzone anymore. They was like, because we don't fucking want to. We were done. We 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 just got burnt out on making Killzone games, so we don't want to make them anymore. Now we're okay, making fucking that makes sense. games, and they're awesome. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but you know what you do then? You, you give it somebody to, else make Killzone. You give it to another you studio. You find another studio that you own plenty of them. So here, make Killzone game. Yeah. Problem solved. Weird. It's weird. It's I'm, weird. I'm really, terrible. genuinely, I was really, really surprised by that. 
Yeah, that was surprising and somewhat upsetting that there was just just nuked just it, done. nuked it yeah. to a load. But the bad Sony news does not stop there, because Push Square reports Sony shuts down PlayStation Studio Neon Koi without ever releasing a game. Yeah, I saw that too. They bought Savage Game Studios uh, to work on uh, um, mobile stuff. The studio renamed itself Neon Koi, and then they didn't release anything, and Sony shut them down. They bought a studio and yeah. killed it. Yeah, it's weird. Or may, the studio might have killed themselves by not being good at what they do or whatever, and, you know, you're not going to say no to money most of the time. Um, it's it. I hope you don't ever want to see people lose their jobs, right? Obviously. You don't. Um, I hope we are heading towards a little bit of course correction, though, where... I hope so, too. I do want to... Speaking of corrections, I just want to point out... This is because Sony decided they didn't want to pursue mobile as hard anymore. Right. So Which this wasn't a failure of this studio. Right. It was like, we're going to buy this studio because we're going to focus on mobile. And then Sony said, you know what? Never mind. Because, like, Sony, Sony games are not mobile games. You know? Like, Nintendo games are not mobile games. I mean, the Pikmin thing does pretty good. You know? And, like, Pokemon... I, Pokemon and Nintendo are, like, separate to me. You know, when I when I talk about Nintendo, I, I don't ever mean Pokemon, um, <laughs> you know, but like that Super Mario run game, whatever the fuck that was like, it was fine, but I it, disagree. I thought Mario run was great. I know like, Fire I'm, Emblem Fire Emblem on mobile did gangbusters. Yeah, and what was that game? Um, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Ever it Oasis. Just... There's a Dragalia Lost was a big was a big success, and they shut it down because they're like, okay, that was a fun experiment, and everyone was like, but wait, I was still playing that. <laughs> they're like, no, you're not. You're good. We're done. Like, I don't know. Nintendo just... clearly doesn't think there's yeah. things. I, I, Doctor Mario Express was great, and then they right. shut that shit down. I was playing that game. <laughs> you bastards. All right. Apparently, I don't know what I'm talking about, but. <laughs> I would, I but would I know what you're saying. It, Putting it, it was like uh, Sony made this mistake with PSP, right. right? They they were like, "All right, here's the PSP. We're gonna put PlayStation games on here," right? And it was like, and "No, that you don't doesn't put, work." Yeah, you don't. You have to make games for this platform, right? And that's what Nintendo had been doing with their mobile stuff, which they seem to be pulling back on. But like, you have to make things for the platform you're making them for, not right. just say like, "All right, we're gonna put the." 90 hour experience on the go right no until that, you have something like the switch that works in yeah. both on both directions and right <sighs> yeah I, I like i said i hope this is maybe a little bit of course correction and we can get away from the 600 million dollar game that is like just not, yeah we really need to the not everything has to, to be gigantic out because it, it occasionally they sure. Do. Let's have yeah. that project from time oh, to time. No, let's do, sure. Let, let's let's do, let's have our Spider Mans and our the God, big of, God of War. Like, let's yeah. do that. But but also can't more Astrobot. Yes, yes, exactly. More Astrobot. Yeah. More Jack and Daxter. Right. Come you know you want to. I, come on, naughty dog. You do you naughty you naughty dog you, you know <laughs> naughty dog. Come on, pricks. <laughs> Oh, this is a fun one. Destructoid, <laughs> Destructoid reports Nintendo has released a mu music app for some reason. <laughs> if that is not the most just... Nintendo shit ever. Okay, <laughs> by the way. Dropping. We're all sitting here like, all right, you said you were going to announce the Switch 2 by March. Like, what are we doing? Come on, guys. When's Switch 2 coming out? Hey, guess what? Xenoblade Chronicles X is coming to Switch. I'm just fucking awesome. but. It's not what we're here for. I'm <laughs> happy for you, but where, where's, where's some news? Where's some more on the Switch 2? Yeah. Hey, did you know we have a music app now? And look, this music app's awesome. That's I think great. It's fucking great. Yeah. It's an actually really well designed app. It works really well. I can find things easily. I can put it's the Wii Shop channel selection. on for an hour. Exactly. At a time. I was listening to all the Wii songs. I was trying to go to bed. I was like, I need to chill out. Oh, let me put on the old news channel. Oh, the weather <laughs> channel. Yes. And they've got all the Wii stuff. And like the That's soundtracks great. are complete. They're not fucking <coughs> around. No. And they've already added. So they already, already added a new one. And they said they were going to add something else in the next couple of days. Like, 
I'm hoping that this doesn't devolve into Nintendo Switch Online, where it's like every six months we get a game or two. But, uh, because there's a ton of great Nintendo-owned music that I'd love to have on this app. That's great. That and they refuse part of your to put existing... anywhere else. Yeah, it's kind of weird. But that is Nintendo. Yeah. I'd rather have it here than nowhere. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's part of your existing NSO subscription. So if you have Nintendo Switch Online, you have Nintendo Music. Yeah, it's cool. That's great. That's cool. Yeah. I am into that. So, yay. Good job, Nintendo. Keep, keep being weird. When's that Switch 2? When's that Switch 2 announcement? Hey, we got an alarm clock! <laughs> okay! So fucking, <laughs> fucking weirdos! Stupid. So dumb. <laughs> I love this company. Like, seriously, who could have seen that shit coming? They're like, we're gonna announce Switch 2 sometime in the next couple of months. And they're like, we've got a new announcement! It's an alarm clock. It's a cheese grater. <laughs> like, fuck, dude! <laughs> Look, this is great. I love cheese graters. Sure. I'm all for this. But, and look, they're not going to announce it now. They would be crazy to announce it now. Like, they're, they're, the Switch is doing just fine. And if they announce anything before Christmas, they're going to cannibalize their own holiday sales. Sure. I don't expect that announcement before the end of the year. But it's Which still means it's going to happen time. tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah, clearly. Because you can't predict these lunatics. No. They're out of their minds. Time Extension reports Tim and Jeff Fallon's development disc archive has now been preserved. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, so, okay, so the Fallen Brothers, uh, they made super awesome music uh, for video games. Oh, uh, wait, they're, fuck. They're... I do know what that is. Never mind. Shut yeah. up. What am I talking about? So, so they're, they're archive of a... Uh, um, Let's see. Kevin Edwards on Twitter announced, After a lot of work, I am now ready to release Tim and Jeff Fallon's Software Creations Development Disc Archive. Following on from uh, at Break Into Prog's initial release, I have been able to recover more source files and add lots of extra resources. Um, so this is like super awesome early development stuff, including uh, sound and music files for Ghosts and uh, Ghouls and Ghosts and Bionic Commando. Like there's... There's, there's, there's some real history in here. One of them just passed away, right? Pancreatic cancer. One of the oh, Fallon God, brothers. They? Yeah. Maybe. Like a couple months That's ago. Like... Uh, let's ask the internet. Or maybe maybe longer than a couple months because I don't understand time anymore. But I thought it was relatively recent. Sadly, in May 2024, Jeff lost his battle with pancreatic yeah, cancer. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, it was Jeff Fallon. Yeah. Because that one of them is responsible. I think it's Tim is responsible for, in my opinion, the most underrated NES soundtrack, which would be Silver Pictionary? Surfer. Silver Surfer. Oh, Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer is yeah, so was, fucking I'm good. Pretty sure that was Tim Fallon. Tim Fallon also did the, like, the uh, uh, Pictionary soundtrack that just goes way too hard. Yeah. <laughs> It's fucking Piction, Pictionary, and it's just like, this shit's crazy. <laughs> Love it. Oh, moving on. Push Square uh, reports <clears throat> random. Suda51 claims to have met the mysterious sales maestro Wario64. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Something wrong with everybody so, over there. Suda51 is crazy, right? He's already kind of a goofball. I love that guy. Uh, but, like, Wario64 is the... I, I follow his account all the time. Um, that, that account does... Just gives out deals all the time. Like, follows every deal. And it's just one of the most useful Twitter accounts on the internet. Yeah. But, like, the dude... Whoever's running the account is actually, like, a complete mystery. Nobody knows who he is. But apparently Suda51 does. Of course. <laughs> yeah, Suda51 is Wario64. Oh, my God. I wouldn't be surprised in the least. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking weirdos. Fantastic. Ugh. Love it. All right, I got a couple left here. Uh, let's <clears> see. <throat> Push Square reports. Crummy <laughs> crummy classic sports games compiled in Accolade Sports Collection <laughs> on PS5 and PS4. Don't buy uh, it. That's also on Switch, Xbox, and Steam. You ready for this lineup? Hardball. Hardball 2. Hoops Shut Up and Jam, originally named Barkley Shut Up and Jam. Summer Challenge and Winter Challenge. Who is that for? I don't know. Who's buying that? Um, Who's sitting here going, games. fuck, man, I really wish I could play hardball again. 
like like hard hardball was kind of a good time back in the yeah. day i think the one that cracks me up the most is the fucking the barkley shut up and jam which is like or we're just gonna take the barkley out of this because we're not paying him again and like you know i remember hardball like these are these are really interesting looking games like that's the thing these are neat looking things um I don't imagine this is the kind of thing anyone's going to really be playing, but at the same time, like, video game history is video game history. These things happen. Yeah, I suppose um, that's fair. It's, it's, it is neat that they are being preserved. It is a very <coughs> strange product to put together, though. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. I, shut up and jam. I, stop it. Love it. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Uh, last but not least, uh, I we I think we talked about this on the show at some point relatively recently, but Time Extension reports we can't quite believe that former Dawn is running on real NES hardware. Yeah, uh, this is a Kickstarter that game looks campaign. Nuts. I just I can is one of those cannot believe our eyes kinds of things. You just look at this and say, how is this real? Uh, their Kickstarter goal is immense. Uh, yeah. it's, it's kind of surprising to me that they haven't hit it anyway, because of just like, this is a pretty, uh, a pretty wild looking game when you see this in action, uh, to the extent that a lot of people thought that they were making it up. Like, they yeah, thought there's no way this is real. Like they got the NES basically doing mode seven, which like, which is crazy. Yeah. This is really, 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 really cool looking game. And I don't know that I have the money to back it. Um, because like all the tiers are fairly expensive, they're sure. looking for, uh, they're looking to get um, a hundred and sixty thousand dollars for this, which is a uh, lot for a Kickstarter game. Yeah, they've got tw- as of this recording, they've got twelve days to go, um, and, and they're at a hundred and two thousand. So like you know, the needle's moving. They reach out. They they actually reached out to Stone Age Gamer. They're trying to get in contact with Crixie. Um, because they've been using an EverDrive N8 Pro for the game development, but there's mm-hmm. like a limitation in the N8 Pro that would stop people from being able to play the game on their EverDrives. Huh. And they want to see if we can help facilitate an update for the EverDrive so that this right. game can be played on it uh, when it when it releases. Um, because, you know, a lot of people are also buying, you know, there's obviously an NES cartridge you can sure. buy. Um it looks really neat. I'm I'm super I'm super excited. I wish I could afford to back it, but like right. the physical cartridge, um let's see, what are the tiers? Uh like standard digital, deluxe digital, Famicom Patron edition, which is just the just the bare cartridge is eighty bucks. Right. Um and that's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. I'm not saying it's not worth it. Break in generally speaking, like this game is not worth that money. I just know that in my current position, like, sure, I don't see myself, you know, playing this $80 worth on my NES cartridge, but at the same time, I really want to plug this into my NES and watch it go. Like, I want to watch yeah. it do its thing. Yeah, it's you, so weird. You want to see that it actually works. Yeah, yeah. I want to see it doing its thing. Anyways, that wraps it up for week old news, and that's going to wrap it up for the uh, for this segment of our show. We're going to take ourselves another quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about Qbert. Because why the hell not? You're listening to the Stardust Gamer Podcast from Geekade.com. Stick around. Hey there, Stone Age Gamer fans. Are you also fans of Star Trek? Well, maybe you'd like to listen to yet another podcast, maybe yet another Star Trek podcast. You see me and my friend Majid every other week. We talk about the original series. We talk about Strange New Worlds. We talk about Star Trek. We have a third friend, Brad, who's sometimes here, but he hasn't been. I don't know why. So come on over and listen to our show. Yet another Star Trek podcast at yet another stpod.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah. 
Do you enjoy the Stone Age Gamer podcast and other shows on the Geekade Podcast Network? Do you wish you could listen to them sooner than the regular unwashed masses? Do you wish you could contribute in some way? Well, then you should check out the Geekade Patreon. Yes, the Geekade Patreon is a wonderful and very much appreciated way for you to help us pay the bills and keep our shows running week after week. As a Geekade patron, you'll get a monthly podcast topic schedule and early access to nearly every show on the Geekade Podcast Network, as well as access to a patron-exclusive monthly show called DC's Amazing Movie Time from the creators of the Weekend Rental Podcast. So head on over to patreon.com slash geekade and become a loved and appreciated member of the Geekade Patreon team and get early access to shows like the Stone Age Gamer Podcast, this week's episode, Turning Tracks, and a whole lot more. See you there! All right, everybody, we are back, and it is time for the Alphabet Super Series, where we, uh, Dan and I are taking turns making alphabetical game choices, and I had the fortune, the good fortune to land on the letter Q, and I went with my gut, and I chose, uh, Qbert for the Sega Dreamcast and Sony PlayStation consoles. There was also a version released on the Game Boy Color, and this was also on PC. Yeah. I don't know what the Game Boy Color version was like. I can't, I, I feel like it must have just, did they really go all out with this? I don't know. Did, how, what, did, did, give, uh, did, let's see. Uh, <laughs> let's go over the basics. Qbert was released in 1999. Uh, it was developed by Artex Studios, uh, except Pipe Dream Interactive handled the Dreamcast port, and Morningstar Multimedia handled the Game Boy Color port. It was published by Hasbro Interactive. Uh, it came out on Windows and PlayStation in, on November 14th, 1999. Um, sorry, yeah, the PC was November 14th, the PlayStation was November 30th, uh, on Game Boy Color it came out September 25th, 2000, and on Dreamcast, December 5th, 2000. And it hit Mac OS in October 2001, look at that. Uh, huh. It's a reimagining of the original Qbert, just with a whole lot of, uh, new stuff added. Yeah. So what did you think of, uh, I, of this game? I thought it was a fine version of Qbert. But it's just Qbert. Right? Like, there's really... There's not a lot you can do with Qbert. You know? So, the original I, arcade version is just the triangle, right? right. It's just the pyramid. Uh, and this, I thought, was really clever in I, that it added all of these extra stages to them. Like, these different stage layouts. Yeah, and like, it goes in weird directions. Like, it does. And, and in it, a good I, way. I thought it was... In a mostly good way. Um... My biggest problem with this is as the game got more compli- complex as it went on, right. um, it was really hard to tell where I was going because the camera is static. You can't really control right. what you're looking at. So when the blocks are like kind of behind other blocks, you got to like jump into a hole and you stuff. They try it. to mitigate yeah. that with with the camera angles, but it's really difficult to tell. Like, I got, I got lost a lot, and especially just because of the very nature of Qbert controls on a console, like even going back to the 2600. No, that was the first version of Qbert I ever played. Right. And, like, the whole thing is on this diagonal isometric thing. So, like, you have to press up to go, like, up and left or yeah. down to go down and right. You know, so, like, there's this period of adjustment no matter where you're at. Like, if you if you assign the controls to be just the diagonals, then you have to press diagonals on the D-pad the whole time while you're playing. That's Which is weird, not precise too. Yeah. On, on any platform because they don't use analog sticks. Right. So, which was very frustrating. It was especially the Dreamcast version. So I played the Dreamcast one first, right? I played this a bunch on PlayStation when it first came out. I really liked it. Right. Um, I don't think Q-Bert. I ever finished it. Qbert's fine. Right. It's Qbert, and that intro is just hysterical. I love yeah. the little <laughs> eye twitch that they gave him. Like Qbert's <laughs> yeah. personality is spot on. This game's whole personality is really great, except for the ending. The ending was garbage. So you you can play like regular classic Qbert, you can play just a straight up arcade version, or you can play um like a modern looking version, but it plays just like the original arcade one. It's a very very nice thing to have on there. But the real meat and potatoes of this is adventure mode, where they have all these new shaped stages yeah. and you have to go through all the different shaped like different level layouts and just play Qbert. And you're avoiding bad guys and you have to jump on the different platforms to change them colors, and that's that's the, the, the meat and potatoes of it. I'm looking up the Game Boy Color version because I'm really curious what it looks like. Yeah. Game Boy Color 
Uh, yeah, this really just uh, looks like regular regular ass <coughs> cuber. This just looks like the arcade game. No, no, they do have a uh, more modern looking stages. That's neat because like he's he's got a, he's got a good look on his face. Like his eyes look around, so that's pretty cool. So it's not just a straight port of the arcade game, but it doesn't have the the same degree of complexity of the levels right. as the the other one, which I think is kind of a good thing. Because you don't have that instance where you're gonna look, but you're gonna fall behind a block. It's just they're all pretty straightforward. It's really similar to um, I played that a uh, Tui game, Totes the Goat, a while yeah. back that I was super fond of. Yeah, and that's a similar situation. They didn't have that kind of trappings where you would fall behind blocks. Yeah, no, I like I had fun with this. I I thought it was cool. I thought the layouts were cool. Like it felt. That's why I said like it's Cubert. You know, like it felt like Cubert. Like certainly a more modern you know some of the the level design like you said um maybe not as clever or or maybe trying to be too clever um in that isometric space of of the way things were set up um i did have an issue and i don't know if it's just the uh the schmemulated uh version that i was playing um but there it almost like i had to fuck with the timing a little bit because there seemed to be um like I would jump twice a lot in when I didn't want to like holding the direction cuz I play Cubert pretty quick like I just always have you know very deliberate in the the movements and whatnot um and I don't know there was a bunch of times where I just I maybe I held it for like a half a set like just a fraction too long and I would end up jumping off a platform because the it just kept going. You know, it didn't change as it wasn't as responsive as I would have liked for the way I play. And I feel like that, as you were saying, like if that were on an analog stick, I don't think that would have been the a problem, but I don't know. I can't say that I really experienced much of that on my plays. What I thought was interesting was that the Dreamcast version really didn't run very well. Um, I, I uh, the first one I booted up for my playthrough on this was the Dreamcast one, and right. I was kind of surprised. I remembered it running really. S- I, I remember it playing it at my store, my Funko Land back in the day, and being like, "Oh, this is just a cleaner version of the PlayStation one." It also right. has a, a different um, a menu interface, okay? Because uh, the PlayStation's menu interface was kind of garbage. Yeah, it's, it was a, these it's little rotating pretty cubes shitty. That you couldn't read. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> it you was really see. difficult to. Add. Yeah, yeah, you, you can't really figure out what you're doing. Um, so, uh, when, when I jumped into the Dreamcast, I was playing the Dreamcast one, I was like, I didn't even think about the menus, and then when I booted up the PlayStation one afterwards, I was like, oh god, these are terrible. Yeah. But the, the Dreamcast <clears throat> one has these, like, real frame issues, like, hmm. uh, it, it just kind of chugs a lot from time to time when the, when stages start, and the PlayStation one, while not as sharp as the Dreamcast one, it feels better to play, it's, it's, um, and it doesn't have quite as much of the, uh, it doesn't chug from time to time. It's just a really much smoother experience overall. Hmm. Um, the final stage is a is insane. You have to like play sure. all these like really quick levels in the outside of a giant cube, and then you have this like weird showdown with um, uh, Coily the Snake, like a giant version of Coily the Snake. You have to have this showdown, and that's the end of the game. And then you get the terrible ending, which is uh. <laughs> Which is a freaking dance number with all the characters in Cubert, but like an old old timey like stage show dance yeah, it's, number. It's weird. It's like what what what? It's weird. It's a choice. It is really weird. It is indeed a choice. I feel like the people who made this game definitely had fun making it, but yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, if if you like Cubert, this is for you. Yeah, if you're a fan of the arcade version of Cubert, I think you should definitely give this a shot. Um. Because it is, it is, you know, it's, it's, Cubert is a solid game, you know, at its core, and this is a really fun version of it. It just has some, it has some growing pains that it didn't grow out of. Um, yeah. I don't think this flavor ever got a sequel, but there are other games like it out there in the world that, that have this kind of stuff fixed. Um, so, yeah, if you're a fan of Cubert, I say go for, go for it. I, I had a lot of fun revisiting this one and, and the nostalgic sounds that were attached to it, like, the backgrounds are all these really weird, like Max Headroom, super trippy. <laughs> they are really fucking things weird. Float around. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a strange little thing. Uh, but it's but it's a neat game. Cubert's got a great personality, and I say uh, I say it was well worth our time. It's got a good beat, and you can dance to it. Yep.
All right. Well, I guess if we don't have anything else to say about Qbert, uh, that no. was a nice short segment. But you know, we're we're moving things along here. We're we're shuffling along. So Dan, you're you're in charge of R. What what's your uh, what's your plan for the letter R? Oh uh, man, I I really like struggled with this one because there is there's a lot. But there is a game. There is R is not Q. No, it like there's just, there's just so much. But there's a game that has I've always been really curious about it, um, just from the way it looked. Um, but it's for a system that I didn't own. Um, so we're gonna you know so therefore I've never played it. Um, so we're gonna rectify that uh, this month, and we are going to play for the Sega Genesis or the Mega EverDrive. <laughs> Is <laughs> what you're gonna play it on? Um, we are going to play Ranger X. Ranger X. I think I own that game. It looks cool. It's like it's giving me, uh, you know, some like treasure kind of vibes um, for like a run and gun shooter. It just looks really awesome. I've always been really, really curious about this game. I've always loved the way it looked. It's just something I've always wanted to get to. I was like, all right, let's do it. Bosses look really weird and cool and. Yeah, I'm into it. I thought I owned Ranger X. Am I crazy? I just looked it up in my game eye and I don't see it. But I can picture the box. Yeah. I don't know. Hold on a second. I'm going to walk across my room and check. One <laughs> second here. Okay. One second. Hold on. Vamp Holding. Vampire. I, there is no vamping, right? <laughs> it's just complete. I just sit here. Uh, feel like, uh, that's my vamp right now. It's just feeling shitty. I got nothing else. Sorry. I'm trying to think if I heard any funny jokes. Loading the dishwasher, that one was funny. That was good. <sighs> nope. I got nothing. I'm sorry, Chris. It's just... I mean, technically, I suppose, now that I'm just talking the whole time, this is vamping. Um, but it's not very good vamping. Which... I mean, if we would have done this yesterday on Halloween, I would have been vampiring, um, which would have been fun. Just start biting people. Not that there's anybody down here. And bite myself. That's weird. That's a fucking strange. I don't know. I keep hearing like you're coming closer, and I keep hearing like, oh, okay. I was like, all right, I get, I get to stop talking for a second. No, I don't have it. No, oh, son of a bitch. I could, why am I? I I can picture this game clear as day. Like. I can picture this box clear as day. Maybe That's you sold so it weird. at some point? No, maybe. That's so weird. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, Ranger X looks cool. I'm into it. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So, it looks really neat. Let, 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 let's give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, Find out. Uh, it looks like we didn't have a whole lot of uh, feedback for Qbert here. We do have one from Trash Man. Uh, let's say, all right, so I guess I'm trying to save my girlfriend from a snake that has interdimensional powers. I vaguely <laughs> remember the arcade original. This is one of those try-until-you-die games, so I have no idea what does what. I keep jumping off the ledge accidentally. The wildly strange rotating shapes surrounding the level I'm playing are, uh, interesting. It appears difficulty sections... S difficulty selection doesn't actually make levels harder, it just changes the number of lives you get? Mm -hmm. Got to World 3 before I turned it off. Maybe this game is a worthy successor to the original if you are a fan, but I'm struggling to stay interested. Feels like a score chaser from a simpler time. I'd put it above Eternal Champions, but it's just not my jam. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, Cubert's not for everybody. It's also very fair that it's it is a... absolutely above, uh, <laughs> 100%. above Eternal Champions. 100%. Hundo P. Alright. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, alright, well, then there we go. Uh, our next game is Ranger X. I'll throw that in the Discord. X. And that's going to be our show. We're going to wrap things up. We're going to call it a night. And uh, there it is. There's my script. Uh, we're on most social media. Uh, that's our show. Join us next time. Where we're going to be tackling a topic suggested by Dean. Dean messaged me out of the blue and he said he had a thing you wanted to talk about. It's got something to do with video game magazines. Uh, so Dean's going to join us next week. And we're going to talk about video game magazines. I, I don't really remember what he said, but uh, when Dean asks, I listen. That's right. And then immediately That's, forget. And then immediately forget. I didn't say I retained. I said I listened. <laughs> so next week we'll have whatever conversation that's going to be. And that 
is the end of our show. We're on most social media platforms, and if you want to get in touch with us, we aren't very difficult to find. All it takes is a quick look at our show notes, and you'll see links to our social media accounts, as well as all manner of other fun stuff, like a link to our namesake, StoneAgeGamer.com, and more useful links than you can shake a joystick at. If you'd like to get early access to this show's episodes, as well as a bevy of other shows on the Geekade Podcast Network, check out our Patreon, also linked to in the show notes. It helps keep this show running week after week, and all our patrons are loved and appreciated. This show's theme song, Squared Roots, was written by Banjo Guy Ali. You can learn all about his wonderful music and more by following the link to his YouTube channel, also in the show notes. And finally, as always, we'd like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making the show listenable for all you folks. We'd like to thank all you folks for listening in the first place. Actually, Evan's not editing the show this week. This is my fault. Uh, so if this show is terrible, you can blame it on me. That's it. And on behalf of Dan and myself, keep playing games. <laughs> <laughs>